Today we're talking about John Jameson, aka the Man Wolf. Let's talk about him. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. John Jameson was born in New York City to his father, J. Jonah Jameson, and his mother, Joan Jameson, a family who are clearly fans of alliteration. When John was still a child, his mother was killed by a desperate gunman. And so, JJJ was left to raise young John on his own, and he instilled in him a strong work ethic. John excelled in school and was one of the youngest applicants ever to get into NASA's space program as an astronaut. During his first mission to space, Colonel John Jameson was sent for a near-Earth orbital mission. The guidance system on his shuttle was faulty, and John's craft spun out of control. So John's dad, along with a new, young, freshly bitten Spider-Man, went to NASA to offer their help in rescuing John, who was still trapped in the out-of-control shuttle. Spider-Man was able to save John by getting a replacement module to the capsule, but then J. Jonah accused Spider-Man of sabotaging the guidance system on NASA's ship so that he could create a publicity stunt where he saves the heroic astronaut, and also that Spider-Man had broken into a secure military installation to do so. It was a lie, of course, but Spider-Man became an outlaw due to that lie. Out in space during another mission, John contracted a mysterious virus. And when he got back to Earth, he found the space virus gave him immense strength. NASA scientists put him in a containment suit to monitor and, well, contain him. And later, with Spider-Man trying to stop a bank robbery everyone thought he was in on, J. Jonah convinced his super-strength, suit-wearing son to go after Spider-Man, and he went, but Spider-Man defeated John. John went after Spider-Man again, and this time, Spider-Man stopped John with electricity, which also managed to kill the virus inside John, healing him but removing his super strength at the same time. So John still worked with NASA, and so he was then chosen for a covert mission to Earth's moon. John went up to the moon for the classified mission, and while collecting geological samples, he stumbled across a mysterious gem. This was the interdimensional artifact known as the Godstone. He took the rock and the rest of the samples with him back to his craft and then back to Earth, where it was immediately put in quarantine. John, however, was strangely drawn to the stone now, and he recruited a co-worker to help him steal the gemstone from NASA quarantine. With the rock back in his possession, he had it made into a pendant, which he slung around his neck, and there it sat dormant until the light of the first night of the next full moon. And when the full moon shone bright in that night sky, John Jameson was transformed into a werewolf. And for three nights, John was a man who was a wolf, rampaging across the countryside uncontrolled. He worked for the next few months to come up with a way to protect himself from the lunar rays, even making another containment suit for him to hopefully block out the moonlight, but this too failed. In John's fifth month of transforming into a man-wolf, he found himself in New York City and hunting down his own father, J. Jonah Jameson. John attacked Jonah, who thought the creature was working with Spider-Man. That is, until he saw the ruby pendant around the werewolf's neck, and he recognized it, and realized that this creature was indeed his own son, John. So the next day, J. Jonah tried to help his son, and they tried to remove the pendant, thinking that it was the catalyst for the transformations, but the gemstone had grafted itself into John's skin, so they were unable to remove it safely. But when Werewolf battled Spider-Man, Spidey ripped the jam right out of John's man-wolf body. And though John's neck was badly wounded, he took time to heal, now free of his werewolf plight. And so Spider-Man then threw the gemstone into the Hudson River, where it sank into the depths of the murky river water. It wasn't long after this, when Morbius the Living Vampire recovered the submerged gemstone. And when he brought it into close proximity to John, John was once again transformed into the man-wolf. And as man-wolf once again, Morbius put the gemstone back on his neck. And then Morbius tried to use the man-wolf as his own pawn in a ploy to heal himself of his vampiric affliction. A plot which brought them into contention once again with Spider-Man. And again, Spider-Man stopped them, but man-wolf and Morbius managed to escape. So over the next few months, Manwolf rampaged through New York City, and so the NYPD assigned a special investigator named Simon Stroud to the case. And at one point, Manwolf was captured by a villain named the Monster Maker, and it took S.H.I.E.L.D. agent 324, Judith Clemmer, along with Spider-Man and Frankenstein's monster, who'd also been captured, to stop Monster Maker. At Monster Maker's Balkan's castle, he freed Manwolf and set them loose on the two heroes. And then later out in the snow, Manwolf defended Miss Clemmer from a pack of rabid wolves. And by the time Spider-Man found him, he was exhausted and collapsed in the snow. So they loaded Manwolf onto a helicopter and headed back to New York. Then an evil being from Other Realm, a tyrant named Arisen Turk, wanted the power of the original Star God for himself. So he came to Earth 616 and disguised himself as a guy named Harrison Turk. And Harrison Turk hired Craven the Hunter to go after Manwolf to get the stone to kill him so that Harrison could recover the gemstone for himself. But Manwolf was able to defeat Craven the Hunter and keep the stone safe. So Harrison then posed as a teacher so he could get close to John Jameson's girlfriend, Christine Saunders. Turk subdued Christine and captured John's dad as well, but it was Detective Simon Stroud who managed to save them. 
So with the police onto him, John left New York and hitchhiked all the way to Georgia, which is when he found himself in the middle of a fight between Hatemonger and S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., ended up capturing John and brought him back to NASA to be charged with going off base without approved leave. NASA said to him, hey, John, we can drop these charges against you if you agree to go on one more clandestine operation for us. And he agreed. So NASA sent John up to investigate a space station which had malfunctioned and lost comms. And at the space station, he discovered three aliens, Garth, Gorjun, and Lambert. And these three aliens told him that they were there from the dimension that his ruby gemstone had come from. And John agreed to take the three aliens to the moon where there was a portal back to their realm called Other Realm. John's ship crashed on the moon and once again he was exposed to the unfiltered effects of being there and now John was transformed to Manwolf and was in this form permanently. John went with them to Other Realm and there he realized he could be in his Manwolf form but also have the intellect and the control that he had as his human John self. And it was there that he also learned that his gemstone was created eons ago by a powerful being named Star God. While the world was about to go through an existential crisis as Star God grew older and older, and his decaying was decaying Otherworld too. And to help mitigate this crisis, he created a portal to another dimension, the one on Earth's moon where he would go to die. And there Star God channeled his powers and life essence directly into the gemstone, and there it would lie dormant, waiting for a successor. Let's pause here for a moment. Star God's stone, when it arrived to Earth, was part of a group of geological fragments which were all connected to something called the Lifestone Tree. The Lifestone Tree, and later the Tree of Shadows, was a joint effort of a collective of alien races like the Kree, Shi'ar, Skrulls, and the Badoon to protect themselves from other threats. And it was through this association that the Fraternity of Raptors was established, which is where Darkheart gets his powers, along with the establishment of the first iteration of the Guardians of the Galaxy. This Lifestone Tree was also connected to Ulysses and Elsa Bloodstone's Bloodstone Gem, Thunderbolt, Karlosophen, aka Moonstone's Moonstone, Basilisk and its Alpha Stone, Sphinx and the Ka Stone, Blue Diamond's Blue Diamond, and even Dr. Spectrum and the Squadron Sinister's Power Prism. So when Other Realm went through another plight foretold in prophecy about an evil threat, which we learned was in the form of that villain Turk, Stargod manipulated fate so that someone would discover his gemstone and that a successor to Stargod would be chosen and this new Stargod would come to Otherworld and rescue them from the crisis. Colonel John Jameson was the one the fates decided would be the Stargod successor. However, the power that Stargod sent through the portal was filtered and weakened, and so when Manwolf had the gem, he only had access to limited amounts of Stargod's power. This also explains the cadence with which he transformed a Manwolf, which was, in the past, only during the full moons. But in Otherworld, he had access to all of its power, and so Manwolf helped the people of Otherworld defeat the threat of a risen Turk. Sheila had met with Manwolf when he first arrived, but she was killed in an attack by Turk's forces, and then they assaulted Turk's Sky City on majestic ruby red Pegasus horses. He then contacted a guy on Earth named Richard Rory and had him go to Jennifer Walters the She-Hulk and with her help was able to save other realm and Manwolf then used his powers to send himself back to Earth 616. And now back on Earth, Manwolf was again relegated to using just a portion of his stone's powers and once again he was forced to only transform during a full moon, a transformation mind you that he had no control over. The stone had re-embedded itself in his skin and now it was infecting his body and it was poisoning him. J. Jonah Jameson continued to search for his missing son while Spider-Man battled with a bandaged, mummy-like creature which turned out to be John in his bandages. When his father J. Jonah learned of his son's health condition, he had him put in cryogenic stasis to stop the malignant tumor of a stone from further killing his son. But then Spencer Smythe released Manuel from his cryo chamber and again he rampaged around. And it was Spider-Man who again had to step in and stop Manwolf before he could be captured. But before he could be captured, Smith teleported Manwolf away. Months later, John came back and went to Dr. Kurt Connors for medical help. Dr. Connors had John undergo radiotherapy, which drew the gem's root system from John's body, and then the gem was out of him. The gem then crumbled, and John was physically back to his old self. But the stress of his ordeal broke his mind, and John was sent to a state hospital to recover and heal his head. John wasn't free of his affliction, though, because there were still roots of the ruby gemstone, which remained inside his body and continued to affect him, and those roots continued to be affected by the moon, and he would even still transform to Manwolf at random times. John would then become a pilot for Captain America's Quinjet, and he was now using the call sign Skywolf. And while on this assignment, the evil Dr. Druid teamed up with Dr. Nightshade for a plot to turn people into werewolves. This is when Captain America himself was turned to a werewolf and became Capwolf, and it brought the likes of Capwolf, Manwolf, Wolf's Bane, Werewolf by Night, and even Cable into a battle where Dr. Druid temporarily became the Manwolf Star God. 
And at the end of that mission, John left because he was attracted to Captain America's girlfriend, Diamondback, and he didn't want to, you know, make things weird, I guess. In 1996, John Jameson became head of security for the Ravencroft Institute and even dated Dr. Ashley Kafka, Ravencroft's director at the time. This was a position that he would maintain for as long as our story would go on through multiple wardens and directors, even as he was deployed on other missions and with other teams to quell other threats. Like in Amazing Spider-Man issue 410, Quentin Beck, the original Mysterio's cousin Maguire Beck, who is now called Mad Jack, brainwashed John and he became possessed by a Carnage symbiote and Carnage John Jameson battled with Spider-Man and in that fight, the symbiote jumped from John to Ben. So that was the fight where the Ben Riley version of Spider-Man famously became Spider-Carnage. So John then had to go to Ashley to let her know that Carnage was able to escape by bonding to him and then finding a new host. It was later that John and a special force from Ravencroft tried to capture and contain Spider Carnage. So with the symbiote now bounded to Ben Riley, back at Ravencroft, John and Ashley saw that Cletus Cassidy, Carnage's original host, was dying without his symbiote. John then had to put together an army of guards to stand ground against the incoming Carnage. Spider Carnage cut and sliced his way through John's men and made it to Cletus Cassidy's cell. Spider Carnage wanted tips on how to control the symbiote, and when Cletus refused, he had John put him in a microwave-controlled cell to keep him under control. And John blasted Spider Carnage with the microwave radiation, and it separated from Spider-Man and quickly found its way to Cletus, who now bonded with the symbiote once again. In 2013, Superior Spider-Man issue 4, Ashley Kafka was killed when a mass murderer named Massacre escaped from Ravencroft. And many years later, John Jameson ended up registering himself with the government as a superpowered being during the Civil War storyline and even aided She-Hulk in the team with signing up superpowered beings who'd yet to register with the initiative. During this event, Stegron forced John to transform back to Manwolf in order to attack New York City, which was part of Stegron's plot to turn everyone in the city into their primitive forms. It was Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four, who was able to help Manwolf revert back to being John. Later, John began dating Jennifer Walters, the She-Hulk, and the pair left New York and moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. And while in Vegas, a mysterious substance caused John to transform to Manwolf, and he rampaged through the City of Sin. She-Hulk teamed up with Matt Hawk, aka Two-Gun Kid, to track John down. Eventually, Manwolf stopped fighting, and when he did that, he became Star God. And as Star God, he had control over himself in both of his forms, and control over when and where he transformed. And as Star God, he even fought with a clone of Thanos and held his own against the Mad Titan. Not long after this, She-Hulk and Stargod separated, as She-Hulk felt like Thanos' brother Star Fox had influenced her to date John. He was sad about this breakup, so Stargod headed into the cosmos to look for something fun to do off-planet, but returned to Earth a short while later. And he found Jennifer to try to win her back, but realized it was truly over, and they formalized their divorce. In Nova, the villain Sphinx, who wielded the power of the Cosstone, actually two of them, who were arguing with each other, forced those connected to the Lifestone Tree to come to them and fight. So Manwolf was forced to fight with the Atlantean hero Namorita, and their chosen battleground was the floating fortress of a risen Turk in Other Realm. Later, back in New York City, when Jay Jonah was now the mayor, John met with his mayor dad, who had a key ceremony planned for him before his next official space mission. John still had his eye on the skies after his divorce, but Steve Rogers showed up at the mayor's office and was there to request Spider-Man be given the keys to the city after he saved Manhattan from a Doc Ock attack which really ground JJJ's gears. At the launch site for John's space mission, Smythe, Spygirl, and Scorpion attacked and held John ransom until he could be saved. He did, though, end up in space on a space station, but while there, the other astronauts were being mind-controlled by Dr. Octopus who wanted to control the space station for himself. Spider-Man and Human Torch got him and the innocent astronauts and scientists off the space station before it crashed safely into the ocean. In Deadpool's issue 45, Spider-Man said that a meteor crashed on the moon and the debris sent the second godstone to Earth where it landed in Brooklyn and infected hundreds of people there, turning them into an army of man-wolves who then attacked a shield helicarrier. Adsit fired a UV ray blast at the lycanthropic army and they all reverted to their human forms, so crisis averted. John continued working for the U.S. government, working on technology to defeat Clintar symbiotes. So in 2017, when a special agent named Claire Dixon put together an anti-carnage task force, John was naturally chosen for the small strike team. John's the one who was developing sonic weaponry, which affected the symbiotes, and he also discovered that though he no longer had the godstone embedded in his body, the roots were still definitely still affecting him, so he was still at risk of reverting to a feral man-wolf state at any time. 
And then the cult kidnapped John and he went missing. So a Web of Venom Cult of Carnage book, Misty Knight of the FBI's Aberrant Crimes Division, went looking for him and found John nude and shaking with fear under the rubble of the town of Doverton, Colorado, which was the same town that Carnage had invaded and converted all the residents to Clintar symbiotes in order to build a temple for the cult of Null, the god of the symbiotes. In fact, when Misty got there, all John could say was, God is coming, over and over again. Eric Morrell, Sheriff of Doverton, was captured by the cult and was going to be killed, so John transformed a Manwolf to save him. And when he did, a symbiote bonded to Manwolf, and now Manwolf was a carnagized Manwolf. This carnage possessed John Jameson, then went back to his post at the Ravencroft Institute and slaughtered everyone inside to set a trap for both Spider Man and Venom. After that ordeal, he was able to rid himself of the symbiote, but was traumatized and devastated at what he'd done, even though it was beyond his control. Multiple people told him it wasn't his fault, but he didn't believe it. That warden fired him from his position. So Manwolf then joined Chairman T'Challa and Director Okoye's Agents of Wakanda, where they battled Scavengers, and then were in space where they fought with some space vampires. During the War of the Realms event, Agent Manwolf worked with Ra's Salomon to locate Roxxon's offices and find some hidden hackers. And later, the Agents of Wakanda went to the moon to investigate a plant that was placed there by an elder of the universe named the Gardener. John went up to space with Black Panther, Okoye, and Mockingbird to investigate, and there they were attacked by a sentient plant called Entia. So John transformed himself to Star God again. After they realized that Entia was just hungry, Star God opened the portal to Other Realm to allow Entia to feed there instead of in the 616. However, when the portal was opened, Star God saw that his Other Realm was now a barren wasteland, and everyone was either dead or gone. Star God let Entia take root in Other Realm to help Entia, but also to bring some life back to Other World. Star God said he would stay with Entia briefly to ensure she gets settled, and this would allow him to look around for any signs of life. And he then told the agents of Wakanda that he would return to Earth using his Star Gem. After absolute carnage, Ravencroft was destroyed, and so John Jameson, Misty Knight, Reed Richards, and Mayor Wilson Fisk went to the ruins of Ravencroft and found Jonas Ravencroft's old journal, as well as the grotesque creatures who lived below the facility. Mayor Fisk announced that he rehired John Jameson back to the Ravencroft staff, but now as a security consultant. In exchange for information about Ravencroft's operations, Fisk said he wouldn't have Jameson arrested for anything he did as Manwolf. It took a subterranean assault by those terrifying creatures to get John to transform to Manwolf once more. And they managed to hold the creatures back long enough to contain them back within their prison. Then Reed, Misty, and Manwolf brought in Luke Cage, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and Iron Fist to again confront the creatures, but when they opened the vault door, they found the chamber empty. So a new state-of-the-art facility was built right on top of the old ruins, and the old prisoners were brought back, and the staff was assigned to their new duties at the new Ravencroft. Misty later spoke with her mysterious boss about the latest assignment, and to report on Agent John Jameson to them. She said he took his new consultant job as a way to perhaps redeem himself for what he had done. In Ravencroft issue 1, when John was talking with D-Man, John was accosted by Mr. Hyde, but was unable to transform. They asked him why, and as he walked away, he simply said, I don't want to, okay? Mayor Fisk hired Norman Osborne as another consultant, which made matters rather complicated for the staff. Fisk also installed Taskmaster, Moonstone, Hobgoblin, and Scorpion as heads of staff at Ravencroft. He also hired Dr. Carl Malice as Ravencroft's resident physician. This is the same Malice who, among many other evil acts, turned Sam Wilson into Capwolf for a brief amount of time. John was angry when he saw who the staff were, so he went to confront Fisk, but Wilson had CCTV footage of his bloody rampage during the Absolute Carnage event, and it was his leverage to keep John under his thumb. And then a clone of Ashley Kafka's showed up at Ravencroft, and after some sleight of hand with the blood samples, they concluded, falsely, that this Ashley was the real one. Mr. Hyde attacked with a shiv meant for John, but he stabbed and killed D-Man instead, and a riot broke out, which was the noisy cover that Fisk's evil staff needed so they could slaughter the unwanted below the prison. The unwanted creatures captured John and strung him up and tried to force him to change or give the location of Jonas Ravencroft's journal. And while he was strung up next to John, Norman berated and insulted John for not being able to turn, and then he spit on John's face, which was the final straw. The final insult to get him to transform to Manwolf once more. So John rampaged again, saving his friends, and got Fisk and the crew out of the attack. And as a result of that, Fisk installed John as Ravencroft's new warden. In Planet of the Symbiotes, John was still at the Ravencroft Institute, where the staff referred to him now as the Were Warden. He was there when Null, the god of symbiotes, attacked Ravencroft, killed the guards, and turned the corpse of Cortland Cassidy into the symbiote host for Plague. So John transformed a manwolf and confronted the symbiote, saying, You into getting your throats ripped out by a space werewolf? 
Misty then showed up and Superman punched Plague right in the face, but the chemicals Plague was emitting caused Manwolf, Misty, and the rest of the guards to collapse to the ground, choking which allowed the symbiotes to escape. Despite that, that's where Manwolf remains, heading up the Ravencroft Institute as we move into the comic book future. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.